Let's start writing our very first simple HTML page. This is going to be a static HTML page that will be built up using very simple React components. Here is the editor that we'll be using for this course and all of the other courses that follow on the React path. I'm using Sublime Text and here I am within my current working directory that is the React directory. You can see the directory here at the top left of my screen. Within the React directory, I'm now going to create a new folder and this folder will be a subfolder within the top level React directory. I will call the subfolder static HTML and this will contain our very first demos in React. So you can see we have the React folder and under that the static HTML folder. And I'm going to create my first HTML file within this static HTML folder. And here we set up some very simple HTML and some JavaScript creating our DOM elements that makes up our first React application. This is where we are going to start and you'll see how we build upon this in future demos. Let's take a look at our head tag within our top level HTML tag. And you can see that we have two script tags that reference JS files. These JS files contain the React libraries that we'll be using. The latest versions of React libraries, whether they are development versions or product versions, are hosted at Unpackage, which is an open source, fast global content delivery network for everything that works with NPM or the Node Package Manager. As we move on to running React in a proper development as well as a production environment, a little bit later on, we'll be using the Node Package Manager or NPM extensively. But as we get started with React and understand how it works, we'll simply reference the JavaScript libraries which are hosted on Unpackage. Let's examine and parse the structure of how we reference individual files from the Unpackage content delivery network. So we first reference unpackage.com. This is an HTTPS link indicating that it's secure. This is a reference to the base URL of the Unpackage content delivery network. After this base URL, we have a forward slash and after that we have the name of the package that we want to access. React is the first package React DOM is the second package and I'll talk about the differences between these two in just a bit. After we specify the name of the package, we have an at the rate sign and then the version of the package that we are using. The versions I've chosen here is the latest version of React as well as React DOM at the time of this recording. We are using React version 16.7.0 and React DOM version 16.7.0. Once we specify the version, we specify the path to the file that we want to include in this static HTML, react.development.js and react.dom.development.js. The React package here allows us to work with React in general. The React DOM package offers special APIs that allow you to perform DOM manipulation on your HTML page. When you work with React, you'll be using APIs from the React library as well as the React DOM library. React is what you'll use to build components and work with the lifecycle of components. React DOM is what uses these components and renders them within your web browser. Let's say you're working on mobile applications where you won't be using a web browser. You'll continue using the React library, but you may not use React DOM. You'll use React Native instead. Because we're working on web applications for all of the demos, we'll be using the React library as well as the React DOM library. So you'll see that these libraries will be included in all of our demos, either in the form of script tag references or within our NPM project. There is one last detail to observe here in the script tag files that we've included in this HTML file. Notice that we have react.development.js and react.dom.development.js. React offers JavaScript libraries for development as well as production. Development JavaScript is not minified. That is, you can see the actual variables and the structure of the code. So you get better error reporting as well, which is great for debugging while you're developing your code. Production JavaScript is minified, which means it occupies less space and is more performant. If you've done web programming before, you're probably familiar with the fact that the size of the JavaScript that is downloaded from the server onto the browser makes a difference to how fast your page loads. Smaller the JavaScript, the more performant your page is. That is, your page loads faster. Now that we're familiar with the React libraries that we're going to be using and the unpackaged content delivery network, let's turn our attention to the HTML contents of this static HTML file. Observe that we have a body tag and within that we have a div element with the ID myreactapp. 
when you're working with react it's common to have a top level element within your body tag into which all of your react components will be rendered the id of this element is typically set to be root but you can specify any id that makes sense for your application my top level html element which will hold the entire contents of my react app has the id my react app and within the body i have another script tag where i've written some javascript in order to keep things simple i've inlined the javascript that i plan to use to set up my first elements using the react library we'll set up our first dom element which is going to be an h1 tag using react.create element create element is a function available in the react library we specify the first argument to this function that is the name of the tag the html element that we want to set up which in this case is h1 this tag has no additional attributes which is why the curly braces which forms our second input argument is completely empty this curly braces is what you'll use to specify other attributes such as the style or class that you want to apply to this tag and finally the last input argument to react.create element is the contents of this tag this is going to be a very simple header which simply has the text content welcome to the world of react once we've created this element this is our dom element and assigned it to the variable el we now need to use the react dom library to render this element onto our html page and for this we use the react dom dot render function react dom dot render needs two bits of information to function first is the element that you want to render into your html page and the second is the parent element which holds this element that you want to render and the parent element i get by referencing the document of my html page document dot get element by id my react app this div that you can see here on screen with the id my react app is going to be the parent of our h1 element that we've created and that's it we've used react dot create element to create our first html element and then rendered it using react dom